Hi, this is Mike from Microsoft Boxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to add an additional M.2 port to your PC to add in more NVMe drives. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at how to add an additional M.2 port to your PC. Now, this example, we've got this micro ATX motherboard. Now, as you can easily see, there is an M.2 slot there. That is essentially it. So we've only got one M.2 slot. So you can put in one drive, absolutely fine. But then if you want to add some other expansion further down the line, and you don't want to be using your SATA ports, you want to use the new faster and often more cost-effective NVMe-based drives, then you're going to need some way of adapting the system. Now, it's really handy, easy DIY, and many other companies have actually produced a very simple and elegant solution so you can add an additional drive to your system by using one of your unused PCI Express ports. Now in this particular instance we'll be using this particular port here so this is our PCI Express Gen 3 times 16 slot. Now there is one slight caveat to these type of devices they do require a specific amount of bandwidth in order for them to function so they do require PCI Express Gen 3 times 4 sized slots. So unfortunately, you can't use the PCI Express times one slots like these, the smaller ones, you have to use a times four slot. Now most motherboards these days don't actually have a times four slot. It's normally disguised in a times 16 size slot, such as this one, but it's only actually wired electrically for maybe times eight, which would be kind of halfway, or times four, which is kind of just past here, which is what we're gonna be trying to use. So let's take a look at the actual PCI Express adapter and you'll get a better idea of what we're talking about. So this is the actual kit. Uh, there will be some affiliate links in the video description below if you want to pick one of these up. Various different companies do them. It isn't just easy DIY, there's absolutely tons of them. The reason I went for this one is because this one actually is pretty flexible. So we get included a screwdriver for attaching the drives, which is really handy. And also what you get in here, this one, is a half height slot adapter. So if you're using this in a small form factor PC, then this is gonna be absolutely great. So you can exchange the standard backplate from the PCI Express port and replace it with this half height one. So looking at the actual adapter itself, as you can see, it's a, a pretty standard affair. Again, another reason why I chose this one is because it's uh, essentially all blacked out. So we've got the nice blacked out blanking plate on the back. So it's gonna look a little bit nicer. It's not gonna stick out like a sore thumb with maybe a green PCB and a chrome back plate, which would look a little bit naff. Most people probably won't see it. So if you do wanna get a cheaper version of this, you can get one for roughly half the price. Again, we'll put links for that in the video description. That'll cost you somewhere in the region of about seven or eight pounds here in the UK. This particular one is about 14 pounds. So a bit of a difference in price, but I think for me personally, the aesthetics of it do make a difference. So let's take a look at the actual card. As you can see, we've got our M.2 port, which is situated here. And this will support various size drives as well, up to some of the longest ones on the market. It comes as standard with the fixings actually installed in the 2280 style, which is pretty much what most modern drives tend to be. Now, one thing you do need to look out for this is this will not support SSD SATA based drives. This is purely for NVMe based drives. So this is gonna work with the M key drives, but not the B key drives. I'll try and put some close-ups on the screen now so you can see the difference. But essentially, as long as your drive is a NVMe or a M.2 PCI Express drive, you should be absolutely fine. Again, if you've got any problems, questions, or queries, feel free to let me know in the comments section below. So going back to the card itself, there are a few other bits and pieces on here that may be of interest to you. In the description on Amazon and places like that, they often show it with some LEDs actually incorporated on the back there, so like a power-on LED and a drive activity LED. On this particular version, it's actually being switched around to the kind of inner side there, so you, you are gonna have a couple of LEDs on there. We'll find out a little bit later how bright they actually are. Looking at the connectivity for the car, so as we can see, we've got this blue protective cover on here over the PCI Express fingers, and you can just pull that off, and then that exposes the fingers and the gold contacts. So this will fit into your motherboard. Again, most of you are probably looking at this thinking, surely that'll go in a PCI Express times one slot. So let's try that out and see how that works out for us. So on the board, this is a PCI Express times one slot, and if we try and line it up, and you can see physically, the slot actually overhangs. So you can't put a larger card into a smaller slot, but you can do vice versa. So if you've got a larger slot, such as this one, the PCI Express times 16 size slot, then that will go in easily. And there we go. And as you can see, hopefully from some of the close-ups, 
it's actually only making contact with the first few pins at the start there and the rest of it isn't connected. So this is perfect for AMD Ryzen based systems where we've got a lot of PCI Express generation sharing throughout the motherboard. So if you have a board which has two 16 size slots, the bottom one generally will only be wired for maybe by eight or by four times. So this is gonna be absolutely fine. You don't need that full connection across the entire slot. Okay, so let's go ahead now and show you how this will work. So this is the drive we're gonna be using. This is a Silicon Power PCI Express Gen 3 times four drive, which is the maximum that this card can actually support. So the, there is a bandwidth limitation, PCI Express Gen 3 times four. So that's gonna give you up to four gig transfers, it best case scenario, but most of these drives will be limited to around about three and a half on the read and about three for the write. So let's take the drive out of the packaging. And as you can see, you can see the fingers actually on the drive itself. So this is what is called a B key. So there's only one tiny little slot in there. So if I show you the difference between this and a SATA drive. So this is a SATA drive. And as you can see, we've got two lines in there. So these type of drives physically won't fit and will not work because they're not designed to work with this kind of interface. So you do have to make sure that you're using one like this with a single indentation just on the, uh, the fingers there. So what we're gonna need to do is to remove the screw here. You can also as well, obviously line up the drive, the fingers there with whereabouts roughly your mounting is gonna be. So this, as you can see, is gonna be a 2280 drive. But you can undo the screw and the bolt underneath and move it to the respective places actually on the board. So if you've got a very small, possibly even a Wi-Fi card, you could put it in this section here. Some of the new style drives actually are very small, so you may need to move that. But for our particular instance, we're gonna be absolutely fine. So all we need to do is just unscrew this tiny little M.2 screw. And we'll put that to the side for now. Now we can get our drive. And with these drives, you put it in fingers first and on slight angle, so slightly up at the back, and just give it a little wiggle, and then you'll find that the fingers actually disappear inside there. Then you can hold down the drive itself and get the screw. Get it into place. With these screws, if you unscrew a couple of times for a saw, it'll click and you can kind of feel that it's in place. So you don't have to over tighten it. Just make sure that the drive isn't, isn't loose in there. Let's give that another little turn. There we go. So that is the drive in, in the actual unit now. And that is essentially all we need to do. All we need to do now is to physically install that into the PC, which we'll go ahead and do now so you can see how that's done. And then we'll fire up the PC and show you how to initialize the drive if it isn't a drive which has already been used. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to remove one of the PCI Express blanking plates. Now, as you can see here, I've actually removed the uh, graphics card from the top slot there just to uh, allow a little bit more light in so we can see what's going on. So we're gonna be using this particular slot here, which is our time 16 side slot, but as you can see, it's only wired for by eight at the maximum. So by four is gonna be absolutely fine for our needs. So we're gonna go ahead and move this PCI Express blanking plate just here. Take out the screw, and then we can remove the PCI Express blanking plate. Put that to one side, because we'll be needing that shortly. So the next part is to get our M.2 drive on our PCI Express, and then just line it up and put it in as you would any other card. So all you do is line that up on the back there and push it in and just make sure that's all lined up. So that's absolutely fine. Now you can, if you want to with these cards, I know that some of you are gonna be out there saying, but you can see the PCB, all that kind of stuff. You can, if you want to, but actually go around the outside edge with a, a Sharpie pen, which will actually disguise the card a lot. So you just go along the outside edge there with a Sharpie and you can black that out so it won't be there at all. And also because of the distance we've got here, this isn't gonna impede airflow too much with the graphics card. But obviously do take that into consideration if you've got a triple height graphics card or your secondary slot is a little bit too close to the graphics card. Obviously you don't want to impede your graphics card if you can possibly help it. But essentially that is it for the installation. So let's go over to Windows now and we'll take a look at how to actually initialize our new drive. 
Okay, so we turn the PCI on now after installing our new PCI Express expansion port for the M.2. So as we go into disk management, if you're not too sure how to do that, this is actually on Windows 11. All you need to do is right click on the start flag and go into disk management. This will bring you up the disk management icon or panel, as you can see here. And now we've got our main disk, which is disk zero. So that is our main drive. And the new drive we've put in here says disk one unknown and it's not initialized. So we're showing the full space there, but it won't appear in Windows because it's not been initialized. So, so what we will do is click on uh, not initialized or click on where it says unknown, right click and choose initialized disk. And then we'll get the disk wizard come up. So you can choose here wherever you want it to be MBR or GPT for your partition tables. If this is a modern version, then I would go with uh, GPT. MBR really is for older drives now. So let's go with GPT and we'll click OK. So now the drive is online, but still unallocated. So now we can go into the drive, right click and we'll choose new simple volume. And this is the new simple volume wizard. So we'll click on next. You can choose the disk space. So if you want a full drive, no partitions, you can just go ahead and choose the whole size of the drive there. If you want to make partitions, obviously choose a volume size, which is slightly smaller all that kind of stuff. So anyway, we'll go with the full size, we'll click on next, and you can assign a drive letter. So we'll call this drive letter D, because our main drive is C. And you can choose the file format. Obviously, if you're using this in Windows, then NTFS is the ideal way to go. Uh, you can, if you want to, use XFAT, but NTFS is probably the best thing to go for. And at this time, you can choose a volume label. So if you want to, you could put in something like games, whatever you want to do. Um, we're just gonna leave that blank. So also perform a quick format. Uh, I would probably not advise enable file in folder compression at this time. You will get better performance without it. So that's fine. So we'll click on next and it goes through and gives you an idea of what you're actually going to be doing. Click finish. And hopefully within a few seconds, there we go. There is our new local disk D, our new fresh drive, all ready to go. So I think we probably need to do a speed test on this drive to see how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly download some tools to do that, and then we'll be straight back. Okay, there we go, We've just done a quick test in uh, Crystal Dismark for this particular drive. And actually on the Silicon Power specs, this drive is capable of 2200 by 1600, or 2200 by 1700, that kind of thing. So it is exactly where it should be in terms of speed-wise. So we haven't had any restrictions at all on the PCI Express bus on this particular drive. So yeah, really happy, it's worked as intended and uh, is possibly prevented me getting another motherboard. So yeah, excellent, well done, like it a lot. So there we go, there are the uh, installation done. We've formatted the drive and also we've done a quick test to make sure it's performing as it should do. And it's performing exactly within specifications, so really happy with that. This is a great little tool. If you want to add an extra M.2 drive to your system, now obviously on a lot of systems, especially Ryzen-based systems, you may have to play the uh, the PCI Express bandwidth juggle game, depending on your setup. So yeah, the PCI Express on some B550, B450, etc. boards can be a little bit precarious because of the bifurcation of the different lanes. But again, if you want more explanation of that, do reach out in the comment section below. If you're on X570 board or X470, should be absolutely fine. But again, do check, make sure that you've got enough PCI Express bandwidth for the particular drives you're trying to install. Now, of course, this isn't where it ends. This is just a single drive version. There are lots of other options available. So there's ones with dual drives as well. Also ones that come with uh, heat sinks as well also. So if you want to keep the drives a little bit cooler, then that is definitely an option as well. So there's loads and loads of options from, starts from like seven pounds for the very basic, uh, relatively ugly PCB with that silver back plate, which again, we'll link in the video description, up to kind of like the, uh, the dual drive ones with heat sinks and all that kind of stuff built in. So you really can choose pretty much what is suitable for you. But for, I think for a lot of people, maybe if you're into video editing, you want to have maybe that separate NVMe drive for your footage to prevent lagging and Adobe Premiere, that kind of thing. Or maybe you want to have a setup where you've got maybe your C drive with Windows, your D drive with your games, and maybe your E drive for something else altogether. Then this is actually a really good option and certainly may save you having to actually shell out for another motherboard. So for those with, with older boards, such as uh, B350, B450 boards, even something like this, A520, could be an absolute lifesaver. So let me know what you think about this one in the comment section below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.